When I first encountered encaustics was as a true director, but then when I went to art school, which is something that I wanted to do for many years, I went to the National Art School in Sydney. And um, we were just researching different aspects of painting during the first and second year. And on the third year, on the first semester, one, uh, one of the instructors um, gave us a 30 minute class on encaustic painting. Those 30 minutes made a big difference. Here in Australia, for instance, here we're so used to the landscape and the still life and that sort of tradition. But encaustic is also painting. And I think that's one of the things that I would like to do here in Australia, to start introducing more of this technique, which is, in a way, is still very little known. So Randall, you've begun thinking about the ideas that you're working through now for this current show with this earlier work, Terra Habitato. Can you tell us about the pigments and what you were exploring in this earlier work? Yeah, I think it makes me think of, you know, when we, when we talk about our history and we always hear about um, you know, artists from any country going to another country and being influenced by those artists. And I think as a Costa Rican artist, I always think, or Costa Rican Australian now, I always think, how could you not be influenced by the art of Australia, whether it is by, um, you know, Australian Europeans or First Nations work as well. And definitely the colors are very Australian. You know, I had gone to the, I had gone to the countryside, to the uh, desert, uh, to the Blue Mountains, etc. So I think this began that idea of Terra Habitator, the inhabited land. Uh, and this is also um, one of the first and caustic exercises of mine, which was a finalist also at the Waverly Prize a couple of years ago. When I first came to Australia, I learned about the history of the First Nations of Australia, of the Aboriginal people, um, and also the history of, of the first British people that actually came here. And I learned about the, the term terra nullius, and I was completely uh, in shock to learn that that actually had happened here as well, but also in relationship to what actually had happened during the conquest, what we call La Conquista in Latin America by the Spaniards and the Portuguese in South, Central and North America as well. So I wanted to create a word that was the opposite of terra nullius, which basically means that nobody was living there, even though there, there were people living here. And I wanted to create a word that is also in Latin, and that's when I thought of terra habitatur, which means inhabited land. Uh, and so basically recognizing that um, uh, in Central America, where, where I was born, there were, there were people who were already there, who had had incredible civilizations already before the Spaniards came. Costa Rica has been a democracy, an exemplary democracy in Latin America. It's one of the oldest ones. And in the last election, Costa Ricans realized that, that um, uh, right-wing thinking was actually coming into the country. A thinking that was actually going to take away uh, human rights, um, the care that we have for the environment, etc. And that's when I started to connect. Terra habitator, inhabited land. Um, so in the idea that we as Costa Ricans are the inhabitants of Costa Rica and needed to vote. And so just last April we uh, elected, I say we as all Costa Ricans elected with a great majority, um, um, uh, a candidate that would actually be fighting for uh, the environmental aspects of Costa Rica, the democratic aspects, uh, uh, human rights. So in a way this, this um, relates to that. Um, relates to that as a Costa Rican in Australia actually still thinking of Costa Rica.